for one who knows Veliky Novgorod it's hard to imagine the city without the Great Bridge. It had always been part of city's history, and sometimes its direct participant. The first mention of the Great Bridge dates back to 1133, when the chronicles report destruction of several wooden pillars by ice. Since then the bridge was regularly mentioned in chronicles reporting on its damage by ice or fire, on renewal, on retail shops, on executions, religious processions, and other events that firmly weave the bridge into history of the city. Naturally, first few centuries the bridge was built of wood. Recent underwater excavations tell a lot of interesting things about the engineering structure of the bridge. Its basis, as is known from the chronicles, was made of oak piles driven into the bottom. Piles were located at intervals to reduce resistance to strong currents. We hope that the ongoing archaeological research of the bottom of Volkov River will answer many questions about the medieval period of the bridge. Wood is not the most lasting material, so over time the design of the bridge had changed. By the 17th century, we see references to stone foundations, which were stronger and more durable than wooden ones. We do not know for sure what they looked like, since only schematic descriptions are available. Finally, in 1825, according to project of a famous Russian architect Casimir Rakil, a bridge was constructed, which we see in the first photographs of the city. Construction works lasted for six years. The bridge had ten stone pillars connected by wooden arched spans. One passage on the right bank was wings spreading, allowing sail vessels to pass through. The Rakels Bridge served the city for more than 70 years, and according to many contemporaries, it was the most beautiful and harmonious. However, time took its toll. The wooden parts had to be changed often. In the end, the stone pillars themselves began to collapse, creating a threat to highway traffic between Moscow and St. Petersburg. At the end of the 19th century, it was decided to radically rebuild the Great Bridge. The author of the new bridge project was engineer Solovyov, who took the suspension bridge in German city Mannheim as a basis. At that time similar designs were quite popular in bridge building. Although Mannheim Bridge did not reach us, the similar Hammersmith Bridge in London, Glienica Bruca in Potsdam, Liberty Bridge in Budapest, and many others have survived. In a German city of Ulm, you can see the Neuterbrücke Cantilever Truss Bridge, very similar in design, built four years after Novgorod I. Although not over water but railway. A bridge with a very similar construction, can also be seen not far from Novgorod. This is the old Volga bridge in city of Thwer. The construction of a permanent bridge in Novgorod began in November 1898. A temporary wooden bridge was built next to the old one, carrying passenger and cargo traffic for several years. Initially managed by engineer Nevinsky, replaced by engineer Alexander Nikolsky a year after. 
Upper part iron structures of Volkov Bridge were produced by Raz Arn Machine Building Plant. Metal beams for the movable part were constructed in St. Petersburg. Total weight of metal structures of the bridge reached 35,000 pounds. On March 21, 1901, in his report, engineer Nikolsky announced that upper metal structures of the first span of the Volkov permanent bridge sat on its supports, and dismantling of scaffolds had started. It's interesting that the initial design of the iron bridge was simplified during construction. The extreme spans were not replaced by metal girders, but remained with wooden supports, as with the predecessor. The railing also remained old, instead of new supposed to be made of casted iron. However, the bridge was decorated with new lamps at each side, and on each of the four pillars. Both sides of each arch were decorated with coats of arms of Russian Empire and of Novgorod Province. In 1902, the bridge was officially opened, and immediately caused controversial reviews. High pylons of arches and hanging trusses of the bridge contrasted strongly with general appearance of the city deeply provincial at that time. Some townsfolk complained that the bridge violated the Kremlin's historical view. That's how a famous local historian Nikolai Porfiridov spoke about the new construction. The bridge has another remarkable property. Its boardwalk highly elevated above water, resonates sounds of horses' hooves like a musical instrument deck. During quiet spring and summer evenings, when other noises subside, the sound of hoofs on the bridge deck can be heard throughout the whole city. With the Iron Bridge, Novgorod met the October Revolution. The last planned reconstruction dated back to the 30s of the last century, when it was decided to replace the movable mechanism, outdated for a hundred years. Instead of lifting wings, Solovyov's bridge received a turning mechanism. A new, third arch turned along the river's current and back. Its length allowed to dismantle the extreme right stone pillar and to significantly expand passage for ships. Apparently, at the same time with installation of this turning mechanism, remaining wooden spans on the left bank were finally replaced by metal girders, according to initial plan. In this form, the bridge lasted for about 10 years. In August of 1941, retreating Red Army blew up the turning mechanism. The damage was justified. Destroying of a new span had slowed down progress of Nazi, and for two and a half years the Red Army was able to firmly keep foothold in only four kilometers to the east from Novgorod, at the turn of Mali Volkovitz River. During winter of 41-42, the Nazis built a temporary wooden structure, connecting the main part of the bridge with the right bank. For two and a half years, the bridge stood with this wooden prosthesis. Shot through by snipers and artillery, but still functioning. Military photographs of that time show that the central part of the bridge, although remained, but also suffered from explosion. The cables were torn, and the main beam of the bridge broke in its middle, leaning right half down.
These damages could surely be fixed later on, but the war ruled otherwise. It all ended in January 44. The Germans knew how to build iron bridges, they also knew how to destroy. When the Red Army advanced, the story repeated. With several local explosions both stone pillars were destroyed. The carrier cables in the upper parts of the pylons were torn apart. And the whole structure completely collapsed into the Winter River. The remains of the bridge were finally dismantled only six years later, and for 40 years the Great Bridge was gone. To reappear later, but under a completely different name. Restoration of now pedestrian bridge began in 1985. The project was specially developed by Leningrad branch of Gidrostroy Institute. Construction was done by the bridge building team 75. Already on November 3, 1987, the new bridge sat on its supports. The whole operation was done with use of floating supports and of several tugboats, and took only three hours. It is interesting that while working in the pit for one of the new supports, the builders found remains of the old bridge foundations back from 1825. On a metal mounting plate one could read the date and even the manufacturer's mark. This can be called a connection between generations of the great bridge descendants.